As an early teen, there was no bigger treat in the early to mid 90s than the trip to the video rental store at the weekend. Well, apart from when mum went out and left the catalogue with all the ladies in their underwear in it. Mmm, sweet objectification. There was a whole cornucopia of cinematic joy to be found at the local video store, with well-known essential rental gems from Aliens, to Tim Burton's Batman, to Robocop, but also lesser-known, lower-budget efforts like American Ninja, Maniac Cop and Delta Force 3. They were terrible, but as a teenager, you didn't care as long as someone got shot in the face. One movie that I never saw at the video shop was No Escape. Not only did I never see it at the video shop, but up until I started doing this series, I'd never even heard of it. I'm by no means Mark Kerr mode in my cinematic knowledge, but I worked at an HMV for over 10 years and was thought of as the movie guy. Well, that or ugly McBum face. But generally, my knowledge of movies and obscure movies of that was pretty good. So it came as a little bit of a surprise when I found this Super Nintendo game with Ray Liotta on the front. No Escape was a 1994 movie released by Columbia Pictures. The movie made a dismal $15 million return on a $20 million budget. The movie stars a bunch of actors whose Hollywood handprints are probably tucked away down dingy alleyways or near public toilets in Hollywood. Lance Henriksen, Kevin Dillon and this guy... All feature with Goodfellas star Ray Liotta in the lead role of Captain J.T. Robbins. The synopsis is that Robbins is sent to prison for killing his superior officer in the year 2022. The corrupt corporate prison grinds down on Robbins, who decides to rebel and he gets rewarded for his efforts with a transfer to Absalom, an isolated incarceration island filled with the very scummiest of the world's lawbreakers, all left to their own devices. Two rival factions, the Outsiders and the Insiders, hustle and bustle for power in this seemingly escapable hell on earth, but Robbins is determined to escape. The movie got average ratings across the board, attaining a low 50% Rotten Tomatoes aggregate and a two-star rating from famous movie critic Roger Ebert. At the time of the movie's release in 1994, Roger Ebert said, Little thought has been given to the personalities of the characters, nor is the big picture fully explained. Ebert went on to criticise the movie's lack of logic and lackadaisical attention to detail. So overall, the movie appeared to be very average, and of course we know now that it tanked. But the idea of a marine trying to survive and indeed escape from a prison island, well that's not a bad idea or concept for a video game. Sony Entertainment somehow ended up with the game licence and they promptly handed coding duties to Liverpool's most historic developer, the mighty Psygnosis. Psygnosis decided to make a game that looks quite familiar in both its animation and its setting. Yes, No Escape is a tribute band flashback, from the jungle platforming to the rotoscoped animation. However, I doubt very much that Ray Liotta himself was covered in tennis balls. Even the main sprite with the lack of facial detail has elements of flashback to it but this might not be intentional. It could just be that the sprite, along with the rest of the graphics, are just plain sloppy. The rotoscoping isn't overly smooth and the backgrounds are poorly rendered. 
they end up looking like brown and green blobs that are masquerading as fauna. Unfortunately, the gameplay isn't much better. The platforming is very hit, but mainly extremely miss, which is compounded by the bottom of each stage being an insta-kill pit. You can retaliate against the enemy prisoners' attacks, initially with some pretty ineffectual uh, punches and kicks that have a poor range. They're ineffectual not due to the initial enemies being tough nuts, but because they respawn quicker than a frog with access to Viagra and a pawn account. Your best move early on is to just peg it through the entire level, ignoring your pursuers. Good gameplay design, this is not. You'll encounter the occasional boss, and so begins a war of attrition as you frantically hammer away at the attack button, hoping he dies before you do. Later on, you can unlock more weapons and equipment, although it's rough to figure out what you're picking up sometimes. What is that? There's an occasional puzzle, usually involving switches, but they're let down a bit by the controls and those infuriating missed platform jumps. It really is very hard to judge the edge of a platform and sometimes you'll just go straight through it. To escape is to Delphine's seminal classic platformer flashback, what this dead parent's hero costume is to the one worn by Christian Bale in The Dark Knight. A cheap knockoff that is obviously of poor quality and probably a little bit flammable. And girls will laugh at you and it smells of chemicals and tears easy and you'll only wear it once and makes you forget how to do analogies. Not only was No Escape saddled by the fact it was attached to a film that no one really knew or cared about, unfortunately it also came out at the end of the 16-bit machine's life cycle. No Escape didn't garner too many reviews I could locate online. At this point, a lot of magazines were focusing more on Playstations and Sega Saturns. Though I did find a review in an old GamePro magazine that uh, must have mistaken the 7 key on their keyboard for a 1 or a 2 and gave the very dismal No Escape a very generous 7 out of 10 score. If No Escape the movie hadn't been a flop then may I suggest that Ray Liotta's Robins had been recaptured for a sequel. The villainous wardens could have placed him in an empty room with just a Super Nintendo or a Sega Mega Drive, a CRT and a copy of this abomination to keep him company for the duration of his sentence. What a scary thought that would be. Okay, thanks, bye!